on applauding preachers by St. John Chrysostom. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. St. John Chrysostom on applauding preachers. It is a mischief when one who teaches will in words impugn the teachings by his deeds. This has been the cause of many evils in the churches. Wherefore, pardon me, I beseech you, if my discourse dwells long on this evil affection. Many take a great deal of pains to be able to stand up in public and make a long speech and if they get applause from the multitude, it is to them as if they had gained the very kingdom of heaven. But if silence follows the close of their speech, the defection that falls upon their spirits from the silence is worse than hell itself. This has turned the churches upside down. Because you desire not to hear a discourse calculated to lead to compunction, but one that may delight you from the sound and composition of the words, as though you were listening to singers and minstrels. When we idly busy ourselves about beautiful expressions and the composition and harmony of our sentences in order that we might not profit, when we make it our aim to be admired, not to instruct, to delight, not prick to the heart, to be applauded and depart with praise, not to correct men's manners. We do wrong. Believe me, I speak what I feel. When, as I discourse, I hear myself applauded, at that moment I feel it as a man. I am delighted and give way to the pleasurable feeling, but when I get home and bethink me that those who applauded received no benefit from my discourse, but whatever benefit they ought to have got, they lost it while applauding and praising. I am in pain and groan and weep and feel as if I had spoken all in vain. I say to myself, what profit comes to me from my labors, while the hearers do not choose to benefit by what they hear from me. Even the heathen philosophers, we hear of their discoursing and nowhere do we find that noisy applause accompanied their words. We hear of the apostles making public speeches, and yet nowhere do the accounts add that in the midst of their discourses the hearers interrupted the speaker with loud expressions of approbation. Christ spoke publicly on the mount. Yet no one said aught until he had finished his discourse. How shall the hearer be otherwise than ridiculous? Nay, he will be deemed a flatterer and his praise no better than irony when he declares that the teacher spoke beautifully. But what he said, this he cannot tell. This has all the appearance of adulation. For when indeed one has been hearing minstrels and players, it is no wonder if such has been the case with him, seeing he looks not how to utter the strain in the same manner, but where the matter is not an exhibition of song or of voice, but the drift and purport of thoughts and wise reflections, and it is easy for everyone to tell and report what was said. How can he but deserve the accusation, who cannot tell what the matter was 
for which he praised the speaker. Nothing so becomes the church as silence and good order. Noise belongs to theaters and baths, and public processions, and marketplaces, but where doctrines and such doctrines are the subject of teaching, there should be stillness and quiet, and calm reflection, and a haven of much repose. These things I beseech and entreat, for I go about in quest of ways by which I shall be enabled to profit your souls. And no small way I take this to be. It will profit not you only, but us also. So shall we not be carried away with pride, not be tempted to love, praise, and honor, not be led to speak those things which delight, but those things that profit. So shall we lay the whole stress of our time and diligence, not upon arts of composition and beauties of expression, but upon the matter and meaning of the thoughts. Is not all nature decked with stillness and silence? Over all the face of heaven is scattered the charm of repose. On this account we are evil spoken of, even among the Gentiles, as though we did all for display and ostentation. But if this be prevented, the love of the chief seats will also be extinguished. It is sufficient, if anyone be enamored of praise, that he should obtain it after having been heard, when all is gathered in. Yea, I beseech you that doing all things according to God's will, we may be found worthy of the mercy which is from him, through the grace and compassion of his only Son. End of On Applauding Preachers by St. John Chrysostom Recording by Robert Scott, mojomove411.com M-O-J-O-M-O-V-E 411.com September the 12th, 2007